everyone, today we're going to talk about the Jetboil Flash and the MSR Wind Burner. Both of these are all-in-one canister stoves that are really great at boiling water for dehydrated meals or hot beverages. It could be really hard to decide between the two, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know which one is right for you. If you're interested in learning about one or both of these stoves, go ahead and check the links in the description and you can get full reviews of each stove. If you're new to the channel, my name is Roxy and I'm part of the Adventure Junkies team. We help people like you choose the right gear to get outdoors. If you want to learn more, go ahead and visit the website at www.theadventurejunkies.com. Now for what you really came for, the Jetboil Flash versus the MSR Wind Burner. At first glance, these stoves can seem pretty similar. They both have proprietary windscreen systems. They both have single burner units and use isobutane for fuel. And they're both considered all-in-one stove systems, meaning everything packs into itself and everything you need for to use the stove is right here. That is all-in-one systems. The Jetboil Flash is one of the biggest names in canister stoves and it has a few really great features. One of them being the flex ring on the bottom that protects the burner from the wind. Another is this heated, this koozie, which has uh, a heat indicator on the side to tell you when it's boiling. It also has a piezo igniter, which is on the inside here. Right here. You can also purchase additional pot supports. Uh, this is a fuel support that it comes with. And then you could do a pot support, which goes on top of this. So you could use different uh, cookware for this stove system. However, due to the really hot flame in the center here, it's really only great for boiling water. You can't get like a really fine simmer or um, cook on a larger platform because the heat will be really centered right in the middle here. So this stove isn't really ideal for cooking beyond just boiling water, but it can be done with the additional pot support. The MSR wind burner is sort of MSR's answer to the Jetboil Flash and has a lot of similar features but uh, slightly different in a lot of ways. It has a koozie or cozy, however you like to say that. Uh, it has the same secure pot connection but it is different from Jetboil's and we'll go over that. It does have a different burner system which we'll take a look at. Here's the burner system in comparison to jet boils over here. So this is a radiant heat burner. The flame is actually located deep inside of here. So it heats the pot in a different way. And then it also has a fuel regulator, which is really important for using this stove uh, for all four seasons or at high altitudes. And it makes it so it has a nicer simmer control, which allows you to cook uh, with a finer variation in heat. So the pot size that it comes with is one liter and you can also purchase a 1.8 liter for this if you're cooking for a larger group or pots that are also compatible with this radiant heat burner. But unlike Jetboil, you can't just purchase the pot support and use whatever pot you'd like. So you do have to stick with the MSR family when you're using something other than, other than this pot that goes, uh, locks on top or the 1.8 liter pot that locks on top. Let's set these two up so we can sort of get an idea of them side by side and their similar and different features. So the way this one goes together, uh, we can just talk about the pot lock right away actually. Here the Jetboil only has two places to lock the pot on. on. Here you can see on the Jetboil these two. So you do have to sort of look for it to lock it on there, which it can get a little frustrating when you already have your flame going and you're sort of fiddling around with water in the pot. Uh, so I think MSR does have a better system in that right. It's not going to sit up on its own, so I'm just going to put some fuel below it so it stabilizes a little bit. So taking a look at this, setting it up, it's a similar system where the burner attaches onto the bottom, but if you look, there's many more pot locks on the bottom of the MSR that attach to three points on the bottom of this. So instead of searching for the right thing, you can really just drop it at any location and spin, and then you're locked on. This one also sits by itself, uh, which I see as a pro to be able to just have your system be able to set it on the ground somewhere instead of having to make sure you have stabilization for it. 
So those are two differences, a few differences already. They both come with cups. As you can see, the MSR's cup is larger. This maxes out at 12 ounces, uh, where this is maxing out at eight ounces, one cup. Put these cups right here. The MSR does come with a felt square to protect the inside of the MSR as you're packing it back in. And then they both come with lids. They both have drink spouts as well as pour spouts. So you can cook noodles or whatever and then just pour the boiling water directly out of each canister with the lid on. And then they both come with fuel supports. Jetboil's fuel support, you sort of pop it in here and then MSRs have notches in the side so it sort of sits and twists on. Honestly, neither system is perfect. I think these pot supports all need a little help. Uh, I have already broken MSR's pot support over here. I chipped off one of the edges and then I have struggled for many minutes with a Jetboil pot support. Uh, you can see me struggling in previous reviews. It's embarrassing, but hopefully hard for everyone. I don't see how anyone could just easily pop a fuel in and out of this. It's, it's not an easy system, but they are both there if you want to use them. I don't normally use them because they're frustrating. So just comparing weight wise, the wind burner comes in at 15.3 ounces, which is 433 grams. And the jet boil comes in a little lighter at 13.1 ounces, which is 371 grams. The jet boil does use a few more plastic parts, which I think is where they can save the space, whereas the MSR has more metal going on. Uh, so you can use that information how you'd like. I prefer to have a little bit of a heavier boil or a heavier stove, but with the security of the metal pieces. I don't see these plastic pieces breaking anytime soon, but it is uh, a possibility. If you are counting ounces, then the jet boil is gonna be the lighter one. Both of these pack down to a similar uh, size. We will pack it down at the end and give you another view of them packed down. You saw it at the beginning. They also both pack down with one of these fuel canisters. This is a four ounce canister and you can fit everything in there and then drop the canister in as well. So that's really nice to have them all included. The MSRP of the wind burner is $149.95 and the MSRP of the jet boil is $114.95. So the jet boil takes the cake in this category. It is a bit cheaper than the wind burner. So these stoves can be used in similar situations. We are gonna do a boil test and see how they both stack up, both inside and outside in a little bit of windy situation. The only difference is the fuel regulator on the MSR wind burner, which allows you to use the stove on all four seasons, so colder than 20 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as at high altitude. And it lets you get a sort of nicer simmer. So even though you can't just put any old pot on here, like you can with the jet boil, you do get a softer flame uh, with more control uh, through that fuel regulator. So there's some pros and cons on each. With the eight ounce canister, MSR claims it'll boil for an hour and 35 and jet boil claims it'll burn for an hour and six minutes. So the MSR is uh, more fuel efficient in that regard of how many boils you will get out of each canister. That's eight ounces. We're talking about this small one right here. It's, it's a medium sized one actually. And bear in mind that those are factory specs. Uh, so we are not positive that those are the entire length of time it'll work, but it's a great way to figure out how much fuel to bring with you. If you're going to make eight cups of coffee, how many times you need to boil, etc. You can use those specs to Go from there and knowing that the msr will probably use less fuel over the span of an eight ounce take so let's actually light both of these up uh, to see how loud they are check out simmer control uh, and just do a little nice comparison with them lit as always you never want to light one of these without water in them so i'm going to add a little bit of water to each just so they don't burn the bottom and then i need to grab some more isobutane fuel for this msr which is right here in the snow. So I'm gonna start light by lighting them each without on here, without the pots on here, so we can see how easy this goes. So once again, this is a piezo igniter. Uh, so we'll turn it all the way up. All right, and we're lit. Let's actually just take a listen to see how loud this is. It's pretty, it's pretty quiet actually. 
Let's see if this works. Oh, it worked. All right. So let's take a listen to the MSR. I'd say there are uh, similar, similar noise levels. So here we can just plop this on top. And let's see uh, the control and the... So there is wind happening right now. And it's still on. It's very quiet, but I can hear it. Still on. So that's a really nice low simmer. And I can turn it back up. So the sort of pros and cons here is the MSR is easier to put on, but it doesn't have a lighter. So you're going to have to carry one with you or uh, do the hack that I just did. Actually, don't do it. Don't try it at home. It's probably very dangerous of lighting it with a different stove if you have another stove with you. I'm going to go ahead and light this one to check out Simmer. And we're on. All right, so we're turning it down. It's still on. It's still on. So it's on, but now you can hear the wind hitting the burner unit. It's not really a click, but that means that heat is leaving from the bottom of the pot and going past the unit in the wind. Can you hear that? So that's the simmer. So the MSR burner is a little bit more protected. And we're off. Oh, yeah. So it'll pop off as you get closer to uh, the end of the turn. If you're enjoying this video, go ahead and hit the like button so more people like you can find it. Now, let's get to a boil test. We're doing both inside and outside so we can get a straight boil just inside, see what it's like in the perfect conditions, and then we'll do outside. And there is a slight breeze today. I don't know if you've heard it, uh, but it is a little windy. We're doing two cups or half a liter of water in each of these, and we will see uh, what happens. <laughs> back from a boil test and we got some pretty crazy results. Um, the MSR inside was at 2 minutes and 15 seconds and the jet boil inside was at 1 minute and 35 seconds. The jet boil boiled so quickly that I walked away to get something and when I came back it was boiling and I had to check the footage to see when it was boiling. So that's pretty impressive, uh, 1 minute 35 seconds. When we moved everything outside, the jet boil boiled at 2 minutes and 15 seconds. So pretty reliable there and then the jet boil boiled at two minutes exactly. What this tells me is that the MSR is going to have a solid boil time across conditions so if you are on the side of a mountain or you are in super windy conditions or uh, it's super cold you're going to get a nice solid two minute 15 second boil time. We're at 8,000 feet so that is going to affect it but that's pretty impressive that it has just the same steady boil time inside and outside. The jet boil is going to have a little bit more variation as your conditions worsen. So I think windier, colder, uh, maybe higher altitude, you're going to see that boil time dip. That being said, one minute and 35 seconds to boil uh, two cups of water is very fast. So if you have ideal conditions or you're using this often in a covered area like a like an outside picnic area or something where you just want to boil 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 you have a ton of uh hot chocolates to make for a girl scout troop or something i don't know what you need it for but uh, having that one minute 35 second boil time is incredible once again i walked away to grab something expecting it to be closer to two minutes and when i came back it was already boiling and had to go back and look at the footage to see when it started the boil. So that was really impressive. Both of these stoves are great for anyone adventuring into the backcountry that would like to boil water very quickly. The MSR might have a slight advantage if you're boiling water for larger groups because it has the 1.8 liter pot that will also just fit right onto this. But that said, the Jet Boil Flash, the Jet Boil Series does have a pot holder, so you could put a larger pot on here. The stability might be a little bit of an issue, but you could still cook and boil water for a larger group. The MSR has a better simmer, so if you're looking to do a little bit beyond just 
boiling water, the MSR is going to be your choice. The MSR is also better for those traveling in cold or windy conditions because it has that fuel re regulator. But if you uh, forget your lighter, you are out of luck because the it doesn't have a lighter. The Jetboy Flash does have a piezo igniter. In my opinion, I would go with the MSR wind burner because it's reliability. You can take it into any conditions and know that you'll still be able to boil water and have that hot cup of coffee or make your dehydrated meal uh, no matter where you are in deep snow and gale force wind, the wind burner is still gonna work. Otherwise, the jet boil is wonderful for any camping trips. You're gonna get a really fast boil. If the conditions are great, you can boil water over and over and over again and it won't take long at all. And it's got a piezo igniter, so if you forget your lighter, you are still good to cook. All right, that was the Jetboil Flash versus the MSR wind burner. Happy cooking! Hey everyone, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have ever wasted money on gear in the past or just don't know what gear to buy, I really want to recommend this book. It's called The Beginner's Guide to Hiking Gear, and it has breakdowns and explanations of all the gear you'll need to get safely outside. It's organized into gender, size, weight, what type of hike you'll need it for, uh, and it's really helpful for any beginner out there or even someone who's more advanced but wants more suggestions on how to enjoy your time outside. You can buy it at Amazon and it's available in both paperback and Kindle. Go ahead and click the link below in the description and check it out. At first glance, these stoves are really similar. At first glance, these stoves are at first glance, these stoves are really similar. They both have prepared pri oh man, proprietary propri proprietary. At first glance, these stoves are really similar. They both have proprietary windscreens. They both have single burner burners burner units. At first glance, these stoves are pretty similar. They both have proprietary oh god. At first glance, these stoves can seem pretty